Suppose you are asked to find the zeros algebraically in a quadratic function uh, which is presented in standard form. Well, the first thing you would do, understand then that when you're looking for the zeros, it's when the value of the function is zero. So the first thing you're going to do is replace f of x with the value of zero. So this would be your first step. Okay? Now, the next step has to do with the zero product rule. And the zero product rule is stated generally this way. That if I have two things, oh, that's not a very good line, Mr. Lovell Ford. If I have two numbers, or two expressions, or two factors, that when multiplied are equal to zero, that means either this item and or this item are equal to zero. So for instance, if I told you two times something equals zero, well you know that this would have to equal, if say uh, it was x, you know then that x would have to be equal to zero. All right. So now we're going to use a characteristic of a quadratic in that some of these, some of our trinomials can be factored into two binomial squares. So I am going to rewrite this quadratic into a factored form. In other words, I'm going to um, rewrite this x squared plus 5x plus 6 so it is now in the form of a multiplication where you have two binomials and basically what I'm doing here is I'm unfoiling this trinomial. So you ask yourself two questions. What two numbers, when multiplied together, equal 6? And when you add those same two numbers together, equal 5? So you're looking at the last term and the middle term, the coefficient of the middle term, to uh, when you ask these questions. Well, you're probably going to pretty much guess this right away. 2 and 3 fit the requirements. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. So this trinomial can be defoiled, if you want to put it that way, into x plus 3 and x plus 2. Think about this. If I were to foil this, x times x is x squared. That's my first. My last is 2 times 3. That gives me 6. And if I do my OI, in other words, outside x times 2 and inside 3 times x and add those together, I get 5x. So these are equivalent. These two expressions are equivalent. Okay? Now, we're going to use the zero product rule to find out what the, what the zeros are for this function. All right? So here I have x plus 3 being multiplied by x plus 2. And the answer is 0. The product is 0. So because of the zero product rule, then, I know that x plus 3 equals 0 and or x plus 2. It's an x there. x plus 2 equals 0. Well, solve these two equations. What would x have to be here? Hopefully you're going to tell me, oh, gee, Mr. Littleford, x has to be equal to negative 3. And here, x would have to be equal to negative 2. Guess what, guys? We just found the zeros for this particular function. So when you make your parabola, oh, I better draw this with the tool because I know I can't draw a straight line with beans. Okay, so when I draw this parabola, then I know that one of the points is going to be at negative 2 comma 0, and the other point, or 0, is negative 3 comma 0. Thank you.